This week in Jamaica now, the Vibes Cartel appeal, points, counterpoints, and puzzlement over a damning text message. Then, where was Cartel when Lizard was murdered? The time span is too narrow for him to have been literally in these two places at one time. Attorney cries foul after he is arrested for forging the signature of a judge in a fraudulent land deal. Hotelier behind bars over money worries. Another King Alarm security guard fired following Braemar incident. More on the controversy in the energy portfolio, how one senior officer felt when he lost his signing rights. And a storage container explodes in Portland, three adults are hurt. I'm Damian Mitchell and this is Jamaica Now. The Vibes Cartel appeal hearing is scheduled to conclude on Monday when prosecutors wrap up their arguments. This week, there were points, counterpoints, and puzzlement over a damning text message from Cartel's phone in which he claimed that Clive Lizard Williams chop up fine fine. Attorney Bianca Samuels, one of the lawyers for a co-convict, Sean Sean Storm Campbell, told the court that the metadata for the damning text showed that the message was created six weeks before August 16, 2011, when Lizard was killed. However, on Friday, Assistant Director of Public Prosecutions, Art Brown, explained that while the file or folder was created six weeks before the murder, the actual text message was created on August 19, that's three days after Lizard's murder. And the prosecutor told the court that he could not explain how three telephone calls were made from Cartel's mobile phone on October 9, 2011, that's nine days after it was handed over to police investigators. I will not attempt to advance an explanation, Assistant DPP Orit Brown said. During the trial, a police investigator had testified that the phone dialed itself as he tried to account for the calls while the police had the phone. On Friday morning, there was laughter in the Court of Appeal when Brown repeated this explanation. And earlier this week, Cartel's attorney, Valerie Nita Robertson, submitted that the artist was not at the Havendale house at the time Lizard was killed on August 16. The evidence of the police officer is that the cell site demonstrated that Mr. Palmer was at Havendale um, at 7.52, but the hospital records show that he was at Andrews Memorial Hospital at 7.48, so he could not be. The time span is too narrow for him to have been literally in these two places at one time. Cartel, Sean Storm, Kyra Jones, and Andre St. John are appealing their 2011 conviction and sentence for the murder of Clive Lizard Williams. <laughs> Attorney at law Jerome Dixon is rejecting allegations that he forged the signature of a judge in a fraudulent land deal. According to Dixon, he's the victim of a witch hunt by another attorney. Dixon is being accused of forging the signature of a judge to facilitate the fraudulent transfer of a property in St. Mary. According to him, the allegations have been sensationalized without any proper investigation and factual information. <laughs> Former hotelier Demetrius Cosbogiannis is now awaiting a court date to answer to fraud-related offenses. Cosbogiannis, the former general manager of Melia Braco Village Resort in Trelawney, was arrested on Monday on his return to the Norman Manley International Airport. The police said the arrest resulted from an intense investigation into fraudulent activities against two major banking institutions. Cosbogiannis is accused of acquiring several credit facilities from the banks using different taxpayer registration numbers and names. According to the police, the activities go back to 2010. Anthony Brown, the chief engineer at the National Energy Solutions Limited, NISL, has told Parliament's Public Administration and Appropriations Committee that he was circumvented from continuing as a signing officer at the entity when he returned from a seven-month leave. You never thought it unfit or questionable? that you were being undermined? Yes, I do remember, but it's uncomfortable and I live with it. The man who acted for Brown while he was on leave, Lawrence Pommels, was elevated to a signing officer over three other engineers with degrees. Pommels had a diploma in engineering. Pommels and mechanic Ricardo Harris have been charged with breaches of the Corruption Prevention Act, money laundering, and being possession of criminal property. A coalition of non-governmental religious and private sector groups is demanding stronger action against embattled minister Dr. Andrew Wheatley under whose watch this and other questionable things occurred, warning Prime Minister Andrew Holness that the declining public confidence in Jamaican authorities is now approaching crisis proportions. A second King Alarm security officer has been fired for improper conduct during an incident in which a licensed firearm holder 
was disarmed and physically assaulted. King Alarm Managing Director John Azar said while both officers had exemplary records, King Alarm has a zero-tolerance approach to certain types of behavior. The Guard has filed an appeal which is to be heard at a later date. In the meantime, Peter Champagny, the attorney representing the licensed firearm holder, has maintained that his client did nothing wrong. Three adults were hurt Thursday when a 40-foot storage container exploded in the farming community of Kensington in East Portland. The three, along with four others and 32 children, were attending vacation Bible school at the Kensington Methodist Church. Reverend Bernice Williams, the head of the Kensington Methodist Church, said the three adults were hurt when shattered glass from the windows was sent flying. According to her, it was a miracle that no child was injured. The roof of the church was also damaged and as a result, all activities including Sunday services have been suspended. Three houses and two vehicles were also extensively damaged. The cold storage container that exploded was used to preserve plantains and bananas. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at online feedback at leanerjm.com. You may tune in to Power 106 FM for regular updates. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. I'm Damian Mitchell, and before we go, more from the lawyers in the cartel appeal hearing. Past tense is used in the text message. So what that reveals, obviously, is that there was some tampering and, and usage of the phone to create a text message somehow that came before that was prophetic in some way as to the death, or alleged death, rather, of Clive Williams. So one of the complaints is that these negative directions were left with the jury, and so they would have um, put the appellant Palmer in a particular light, um, which was negative. It was brought to the attention that a man sought to bribe the jury. The learned DPP said the judge should keep him and just give the normal warning. Don't refer to the fact of any bribe and just let him deliberate. And at the same time, the same evening, she took statements and sought to have him charged for perverting the course of justice. So the net result is you knowingly cause a man who is perverting the course of justice to sit on a trial for a citizen of Jamaica when he's a briber and then you seek to try him in half a tree thereafter? We are saying that it's so bad. It's so bad that you ought not to give the prosecution an opportunity to fix those things that have gone bad already. The evidence was not the same in relation to all the defendants. And uh, I was saying that if the evidence was not the same, then certainly common design was not applicable as a legal concept to all of them.